worship Him in all the nations, in all the world. Where He sends me, yes, I will go. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us uh, this morning. And for the next few days, we are going to be having members of the Wilson Clare family leading out in our prayer meeting as they gather for uh, their family reunion. Um, coming to do our opening prayer will be Sister Sharon Clare. I think she's having some difficulty connecting to her microphone. I can see her on the camera, but she's not connected to the audio as yet. And so uh, she will be doing the opening prayer. And then we will have an, an introduction. So I'm not sure if someone wants to communicate to her via WhatsApp or something that she just needs to join her audio and then she'll be good to go.
Okay, wonderful. There we go. So, Sister Sharon, I'll return over to you for the opening prayer at this time. You can begin whenever you're ready. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's mute. No, we can hear you. We can hear you just fine. They can hear you. Hello. Speak yes, ma'am. We, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. We confess our sins now, Father, and ask your forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together as a family unit to acknowledge and honor your name. Lord, thank you for waking us up this morning, clothed in our right minds. In your perfect timing, you have orchestrated this fourth generational legacy of Beckman and Florida by placing within Antoinette's spirit the desire to bring us together in unity, in prayer, and remembrance of our godly foundation laid by our parents, grand and great grandparents, through the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask your blessing upon this medium and internet's efforts in conjunction with the Long Island SDA to honor and glorify your name. Thank you, Father, for divinely protecting and providing for us as a family beyond measure. You have guided us all our lives, Lord. We thank you. Bless the participants, all our family members under the sound of my voice, and those not able to join in. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your son, Jesus Christ. We believe he died for our sins and was raised again for our justification and has freed us from sin's grasp. And now the Lord bless us and keep us and make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us and give us peace. We ask this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Alan Clare was born to Jonathan and Elmore Clare of Orange Creek, Cat Island. He was the first of five children. He attended an Imizi school and did so well, he became a monitor there for a few years. While in his early 20s, he married the love of his life, Florida Dean. Last child. Alan Clare was born to Jonathan and Elmore Clare of Orange Creek Cat Islands. He was the first of five children. He attended an Imizi school and did so well, he became a monitor there for a few years. While in his early 20s, he married the love of his life, Florida Dean last child of Benjamin and Rebecca Dean, also of Orange Creek, Cat Island. 
Orange Creek, where they lived, was a farming community, and most of their food came from the soil or the sea. So, while both were farmers, Daddy was also an avid fisherman with his own dinghy boat. I can recall Daddy's hilarious laughter in many instances when other men would have sworn or get angry. He was very polite and spoke impeccable English. He taught his children to do the same. The only time I can remember getting a whipping from him was one time when one of my brothers called me. I remember saying, yes, but daddy heard, hey, and I got a whooping for that. Mommy too was a strict disciplinarian. She tolerated no nonsense from us kids. You'd better get your chores done or that Tamron switch was waiting for you. Both of them, Uncle Eck and Aunt Florida, were good cooks. I can recall Daddy coming home early in the morning from an all-night fishing trip, bringing those big groupers, snapper, margaret fish, turbots, turtles, lobsters, conch, and all the other kinds of fish. We had no refrigerator or freezer to store them in at the time. So they were cleaned, salted, and strung out on the line to dry. One of them would then cook stew fish and johnny cake, peas and grits and steamed fish, boiled fish and grits with some kind of bread, either potato bread, cassava bread, corn bread, or pancakes or something else to go with it. I remember the rock oven that daddy built in the backyard where all kinds of bread were baked. I can also recall daddy butchering a pig on a Saturday morning. And boy, you know we were going to have sauce later that day and pork for weeks to come. We also had a chicken coop built for the birds and we had fresh eggs and chicken to eat on special occasions. Daddy brought all kinds of seeds home when he returned from the contract in the USA. We had a big mommy tree, navel orange trees, grapefruit, and shadow. He also planted a coconut tree to celebrate the birth of each child. So each of us had our own coconut tree. We also had all the other indigenous trees as well. They had 10 children, Coral, Hazel, Alan, Willard, Ina, Luther, Ernal, Sybil, Lincoln, and Sharon. Two are deceased, the oldest girl, Coral, and the youngest boy, Lincoln. Daddy and mommy set good examples for their children. As members of the Anglican Church, we were taught the Lord's Prayer, the Commandments, the Beatitudes, and other Bible passages. When they learned of the seventh day being the Sabbath, Daddy ceased all work and rested on Saturdays. Unfortunately, he was never baptized in the Adventist Church. When they became members of the Church of God, I heard them praying out loud, a habit they continued until their demise. All of the children, grandchildren, other family members, and all were mentioned in their prayers. Most of the grandchildren have fond memories of both mommy and daddy, who loved them all and even cared for some of them while their parents worked in Nassau. As farmers, I can remember the corn, peas, beans, papaya, cassava, potato, etc. that they grew and harvested, putting the corn in the drum in the barn, 
and drying all the peas and beans for storage. I remember the huge acres of sugarcane grown on the eastern side of the island that we had to tote on our heads to the western side to be taken by boat to Nassau to be sold in the market. Late in his life, Daddy lost his vision. And one day while trying to get to the dock across the street from our house, he missed his footing and fell to the rocks below. He never recovered from the injury sustained in that fall. He died at the age of 92. He had lived a full life as a model to his offspring, as well as the community in which he lived. Mummy died two years later and was buried beside him in the Anglican graveyard near our home. Both now asleep await the coming of the Lord. We look forward to seeing them when Jesus comes to claim his own. Amen. Uh, that was a summary introduction to the family. And uh, we appreciate that historical biography. Uh, we are appreciative of the family being with us. And we pray that they will enjoy their reunion. At this time, we'll be hearing from Sister Ina Claire Miller, who will do our scripture reading at this time. Good morning, everyone. Our scripture reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And I'm reading from the King James Version. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Ascends our scripture reading. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Ina. We do appreciate sharing that scripture with us. We've heard from Sister mm -hmm. Ina Miller. And now at this time, we'll be hearing from Sister Sybil Claire McGillian who will introduce the one presenting the Bible study for this morning. Okay, Sister Sybil, you just have to unmute your microphone and then we'll be able to hear you. And you can go ahead and share the introduction. Okay, yes, your mic is open now, so you can go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to introduce our presenter for the for this morning, Willard Claire, who is the fourth child of Ekron in Florida and the second son. We pray God blessing on his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, all. Uh, of course, I want to thank Sim for that generous introduction. Amen. So, so, sorry, sorry, Mr. Claire, just before you come, we're going to have a song. Yeah. Yes, we're going to have a song by Sister Hazel Claire Colby, and then you'll come and share with us. Okay. Yes, thank you so much. Look forward to hearing from you. And so just before Brother Willard comes, we're going to hear this song from Sister Hazel, Claire Colby, and then the next voice we will hear will be that of Brother Willard. May we be blessed by this song from Sister Hazel. Thousand years, bright shining as the 
son. When all of this go sing or praise, and when we first praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, God, praise 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 God, 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 Ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. When all is dead, to sing God's praise. Come and we first. Hey, God. Thank you so much. Sister Hazel, and now we're going to hear from Brother Willard, who will lead us in our Bible study for this morning. All right, Brother Willard, you can just go ahead and unmute your microphone at this time and share with us. Okay, Sister Sybil, we're not hearing Brother Willard. Just want to ensure that the microphone is unmuted. Not hearing anything as yet. Okay, can you hear him now? Yes, we can hear now. Okay, hey, go ahead. Good, good morning, all. Still hearing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Good morning. Hey. Uh, I, I, I've been given a, an, an impossible task to explain to us how righteousness by faith works in 15 minutes. 15 minutes, think about it. 15 short clicks of the clock to explain a subject that, that, that needs at least six hours. What? Ah, uh, and there's that one. We serve a God who is able. We serve a God of the impossible. And righteousness by faith is an easy thing for him to explain. We ask now that God bless our voices. God bless my voice and give me clarity. Give me uh, speech to explain his word. By faith, we witness some things and could say, only God. So this morning we are going to depend on only God. By faith we, we saw Moses when God said to him, take this children, take these millions of people out of Egypt and lead them across a desert through the sea and over the river into Canaan. In everybody's mind, that was an impossible task. Think about it. Moses had no, he had no boat to cross the Red Sea. Think about it. He had no bridge to cross the river. Think about it. He had no food truck to feed all that people. He had no water wagon to feed all those people. And when we consider the end result, we can all say, hallelujah, only God. Amen. To Joshua, God said to march wrong this city with the high walls. And after you've done so for six days on the seventh day, go around seven times and then shout and the wall's gonna fall down. Now, humanly speaking, that's impossible. But when God says so, go ahead. And we find that when Joshua and the crew shout, the walls came down. Now, how does we get that faith? How do we get that faith? We read in Romans chapter 10, verse 7, 
Romans chapter 10, verse 7, it says, what says the scripture? Let me repeat that again. In Romans 10, in Romans 4, verse 3, for what said the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Following that example, we can believe God, and it could be counted, it could be a count, uh, credited to our account for righteousness. Righteousness by faith. How do you get this faith? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. The word of God we come to believe is the widely inspired and incorporated in a book called the Bible. Widely read by most <coughs> of us, widely read by many of us, forsaken by some, maybe too many of us. And we merge ourselves in unbelief. And let me not begin to chide, lest I find myself at fault and being chided in myself. When we believe that God loves and wants us, God loves us unconditionally, and he wants us to be his friend. He wants to be your friend. So he invites you to believe. Jesus said, just believe and all things will be possible to you. When we, when, when, when we think of faith, we consider the faith chapter of the Bible known to all, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. And when we read Hebrews chapter 11, when we read chap Hebrews chapter 11 and look at voice number six, and we consider voice six, it says to us, but without faith, it is, impo it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We've heard some, some short sermons. And by faith, we can transport ourselves in ancient Jerusalem and listen to one of these sermons that Jesus spoke uh, uh, to those who he, who were intently listening to catch every word, to listen for every phrase and put their own interpretation on what he says, trying to trap him. And in the sermon to that captive audience was rendered to Caesar, the things that are Caesar's and to God, the things that are God. So we've come to know that some of the things that we have uh, really belong to Caesar. We get them all from God. And he advised us to give Caesar his share, take tribute to those who tribute belong and give honor to all who honor the be, be, be law. Like then, we come to to the place where it is, it's safe to think. It's safe to believe that God is able to save to the utmost. 
But God does not save without our permission. He invites us to come. He pleads us to come. And the spirit fights with us to come. But through our stupidity and sometimes through our uh, uh, supposedly worldly wisdom, we spoil that invitation and we refuse to come. And God will not bend your will. He will not abrogate your will. He, he God is neither arbitrary, nor is God capricious. But he is found by those who seek him. And he, if we can accept by faith that he delivers us from our infirmities and washes us from our sins and cleans us from our unrighteousness in John chapter, in first John chapter one and verse nine, by faith we can hold on to the promise. We can hold on to that faithful promise. They said, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you are cleansed from unrighteousness, you are now righteous. So it is by faith in God that you acquire this position in his will. He writes your name down on the book and he don't misspell. He don't miss and cross no I's and make it T and dot no L and make it I. God it never makes a mistake. So we can rest assured that when our names come up and the record is read, there is no mistake. It pleases God. It pleases God to wash us from our iniquity and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Now, how do you know that you need this righteousness that God presents to you? We know that God is righteous and those that come to him will be righteous. And we understand that it is only God. And, 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 and let me refer you why it is that you need, we need, all need, everyone need this righteousness that is acquired, that is, uh, uh, is, is given to us because we believe. In Isaiah 53 and verse 6, Isaiah 53 and verse 6, let me give you, let me pause a moment that you find it in the writ, holy writ. Isaiah 53 and verse number six, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him, him being Jesus, the iniquity of us all. So there is a way out of this sin trap um, let me give you a tip. Please accept this tip at face value. When people come and speak in lies and truth, innuendos, gossip, into your ears, what do you do? I'm going to tell you what I do. I think I am safe to follow the example of Jesus when he stooped down on the temple floor and wrote in the dust the sins of the people who had come to question him, to trap him in the story about the adulterous woman. 
And I try to find me a safe place when people talk and fool in my ears. I have found a few safe places. Some of them I visited and know them very well. Some of them was a one-time experience and I it on my memory and I refuse to forget them. Others I visit frequently and enjoy myself to which I can retreat. When people are speaking loudly in my ears, I need not hear you. Three of those places, let me give you an example. When I'm in good company and people are speaking error, I remove myself mentally from the scene and walk me off to the Garden of Gethsemane. And I could imagine in my own simple way, inserting myself in the scene when Jesus leaving us, the disciples and me, and strode a little further and bend down on the ground and plead to his father for the answer to the problem that he had. Another place that I retreat, retreat two is in North Long Island. There is a spot on the Atlantic side. Oh, I, I, I think that's on the very <coughs> northern end of Long Island on the end of at Seymour's, where you walk through or you boat through, we skip through that day or through the mangrove and we come to a lagoon where the middle of that thing was deep blue. And it was almost circular. And from deep blue to pale blue to aqua to white to Pure white sand, uh, <laughs> punks and bees fishing for born fish, and there comes the fish. And while I was drinking in the sea, and everybody was baiting their line, here they come. And I was busy drinking in that sea while trying to bait my line with some fish, with some bait that punks had bought. <laughs> It always gives me pleasure to think that by the time the fish came and everybody line was set taut with something on the end of it, mine was still in my hand, ain't baited yet. The next spot I retreat to when people talk fool in my ears is on the banks in Orange Creek. A nice spot on the west side, northwest side of the big mango, we call it. Those from Cat Island would remember it. It is one of those scenes that once visited, you can hardly get it out of your mind. And while they're talking to me about all the things that I ought not to be listening to, I can just absent myself and present myself on that bank and get my line out with a nice bond pitch on the end of it and forget all you were saying. By the time you finish talking and ask me, what did I say? I couldn't remember. I couldn't hear what you say. Modern scientists said you that the air worked two ways and I don't believe it. It says in one ear and out the next. Ain't true. When it go into the air, it finds a place in your memory bank and it stays with you. So this morning I would, I would advise that you get a safe place. You get a safe place where you can retrieve, where you can, where you can retreat to in times of trouble. A safe place. Keep it in mind. 
that your God is able to save to the utmost, but if he isn't going to save you without your will, so come to him, stay with him, plead with him, and ask him not to take your name or the book of life. Keep your name in the book. Oh Lord, keep our names in the book and save us in the end because we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 15 minutes to explain that. Amen. Easy. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Willard. I know that I can speak for us all when I say that we are blessed by what the Lord laid on your heart. And we do appreciate you sharing what the word of God says concerning righteousness by faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are now going to turn it over to Sister Carla Rogers, who will come now and she will stand in the gap for us and she will pray for all of the requests that are in the chat. Amen. Heavenly Father, this morning we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory, for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This morning we give you thanks for the rich legacy of the Clare family of Akron and Florida. Heavenly Father, as they meet over the next days for their family family reunion, they decide, Heavenly Father, to put you first. As we listen to, to their history all through the years, you have preserved life. You have brought them through. We give you all the honor and praise. And we pray for each of the four generations that will be praying for us over the next four days and we give you thanks for the reminder this morning about your goodness and your mercy about the importance of finding a safe place in you we pray that you will continue to bless the entire family from the first generation second third fourth generation bless them we pray, Heavenly Father, and we claim the promise found in Deuteronomy for their generation and everyone on YouTube and Zoom this morning. Your word declares, Heavenly Father, and this morning we claim it for our families that you said you shall keep us, Heavenly Father, if we keep your statutes and commandments that you have commanded us that all will go well with us and our children and the children after us and you will prolong the days on the land which the Lord God gave to us. We thank you for those promises. And this morning we present before you Viola D. Aubrey and her family, Linda Gibson, Barbara Wilson, Jonathan, Morgan, Lorraine, Kenny, BK, Lillian Lee. Be with the families of Melbourne, Roll, Eric, Uncle Lara Roll, Bernadette Hunter, Francis Khan, Ethel Evans, Alda Marcus and Vernie Spain, Ashford McCam, Maxine Rollins, Yvonne Adley, Nora Mountain, Barbara Dwyer, Esme Seymour, Ardell Wiley, Brother Abby and Sister Michelle Newman, David Virginia Jarrett, Tamara Johnson, Clotilde Gardner, Ruth Samuels, Almartha Thomas, Alicia Ramming, Barbara Tannis, Scarlett Black, Aladina Oliver, Peggy Seymour, Osmond and Natalie McCoy, Dorothy Henfield, Angela Ferguson, 
Evelyn Pierre, Charmin Ewing, Elder Audley and Monique Mitchell, Tamika Davis, David Warren, Karen, Karen, my parents, Sylvia Curtis Charles and Pamrico Rogers, David Nikki, Aaron and Miss Margaret, Sister Marie and Miss Aline, Sister David Pastor Dorset and Sister Dorset and their unborn child. Brother Sydney and Barbara Dorset, Grandma Ivor McCarty, Ellsworth, Ianthe, Akinathan, Gabrielle, Mariah. He would Mr. Kelly, Sister Veronica, Karen, Kaylee, Dora, and Shawana, Shawna, Kwaithia, Omar, Nathaniel, and Vanessa. Continue to be with GJ and his family. We ask Heavenly Father for a special blessing on Dr. Nikki Claire. Ina Miller, Sharon Claire, Sybil McGillan, AC and family, Sister Delma Roach, Agatha Elaine, and Patricia Crichton, David Alpheus Finlayson, Anastasia Simone, Andrew Culmer, Andrew Hart, Antoinette Miller Wilson, Antonia Johnson, Betty Tinker, Betty Williams, Carmita Rami, Carol Brennan, Charlotte Kalma, Charmaine Young, Cheryl Bodie, Cheryl Smith, Christopher Stewart, Chlorine Softly, continue to lead and guide the families of Clyde Miller, Cynthia Lightburn, Enola Daly, Darnell Johnson, David, Diane, Stephen, Salon, Shania, Delma, Del Rose Thompson, Derek Sally, and Derek Cabodi, Diana Lynn Miller, Donna Roberts, Dorothy May, Dr. Lundy Ferguson, Dr. Antoinette Darling, Dr. Clara McPhee, Dr. Leslie McMillan and his wife and family, Dr. Ruby Major, Dwayne Daly Jr., Sister Edith Roach, be with Elder Orville, Maxine, and Jerome, Alame, Macario Blyden, Elsie, and Frank Richardson, Enid Rule, Irma, Christy, Craig, Christopher Karch, and Elijah. Be with Esther Newton. Be with Elder Winston and Esteline Ash, Francita, Toshina, Pisper Straw, Frederick Wallace, Freeman Kelly. Heavenly Father be with the individuals logged on the Galaxy A30S and A52. Be with Sister Jalita Humes, Grandpa Kemp, Gwen Gibson, Grandpa Henry and Naomi Monka, Harriet, Helen, Pastor Jeremiah and Sister Duncan, and the entire team at the Holy Land Replica. Be with Sister Ingrid Moore and Sister Alva Ritchie, Janet Carey and family, Janet Parker Rule, Janice Johnson, Jaden, Jenny Wilson, Jessamay McPhee, Joy, Joseph Forbes, Jonica Lewis, Judith Colby, Julie David, Julie Davis, Karen Hepburn, Rami Steele, Yasanthe. Lee Strawn, last son, Sydney Stewart, Lillian Roll, Linda, Maxwell, and Ava Hepburn, Lisa, Liz, Lorraine Lee, Lorraine Clark and family, Lorraine Joseph, Lorraine Evans, Lucia Patterson, Maidon Ramming, Magnel T, Marklyn McCarty, Sister Marie, and Miss Elaine, Margaret Ferguson, Marlon Miller, Marina Bethel and family, Marvel, Marvis Davis and family, Mella Roll, Maureen Cooper, Naomi Douglas, Olga, Olga Major, Olive Sinclair, Olive Thomas, Onis, Opal Morant, 
Patricia, Patricia Brown and family, uh, La Patrick and Sister Leonie Wilson, Peter Brown, Priyada Gibbs, Randy, Ruth Waugh, Sandra, Pierre, Felix, Sharon Brown, Sharon Sinbrice, Sherry, Sydney, and Pearl Sylvester, Sister B. Clark, Tamika Finley, Tamika Marshall Poli, Tanya Dames, the Wallace family, Vanessa Miller, Bernita Thomas, Thompson, Stefano Miller, Victorine Wallace, Ronald, Kevin, Ricky, Winsome Flowers, Winston Ash, Demarine Brown, Karen, Keyshawn, and Karen, Heavenly Father, if I fail to call any name or overlook any name and those who names are not written, we present all of those families before you this morning, asking you to be with them, surround them with your love, guide and protect their families. Heavenly Father, you can see all of the requests that is written on Zoom this morning and all on YouTube, some in our hearts, some still in our books and our prayer lists. We present all of them before you. And we stand in agreement with all of the requests that are written and uttered this morning, asking Heavenly Father for your will to be done in the lives of each individual. We pray, Heavenly Father, for all those who are requesting prayers for sick, members of their families and friends. We present them before you realizing that it is your will that all of us prosper and be in good health. So we ask Heavenly Father for full restoration. Heavenly Father, their body, mind, and their spirit. We ask you that you lift them up and raise them up for your honor and glory. Your word declares that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to you. And if we delight ourselves in you, that you'll grant the desires of our heart. So we present the desires of the heart of your people before you this morning, asking you that as we delight ourselves and that as we are faithful, we believe that you're on your word and your will will be done in our lives. Your will will be done with our requests. And we trust you and we believe in you in our crucibles, in our valleys. We will have faith and trust you as we share, as we go through the valleys, the red seas. You will remain faithful in our lives and we will come true as pure gold. So, Heavenly Father, we claim your promises and we believe this morning that your will will be done our requests that we present before you. Once again, we thank you for the presenter. We thank you for those who prayed and participated, giving you honor and thanks during their reunion. And we ask for your divine blessing on each of them over the next days. And we ask your blessing on every individual this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Carla, for praying for us. I will now have our prayer of thanks. That will be done by Brother Ernel Clare. Thank you and good morning. Father God, what a fellowship, what a joy do you want. When we can lean on your everlasting arms. We thank you for this day, God. We thank you for the participants. We thank you for those that are just listening in. Claire Ekron and Florida Claire's legacy would live on in our hearts through our children and through everything that we can remember about them. 
we say thank you, God, for your power and your presence. Bless each and every one of Ekron and Florida children and all listening in this morning. We say thanks, dear God. Bless from near and far, God. We say thank you again in Jesus' name. And let everyone say, Amen. 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 Yes, once again, we want to give God thanks for the willingness of the family to put God first as they meet for their family reunion and also volunteer and minister for the Lord during the next four days. As was mentioned, uh, the family is celebrating the legacy of Ekron and Florida. And the theme for this week is four generations of prayer with this morning's group representing the first generation. We want to give God thanks for Sister Sharon Claire Smith, who prayed for us to open up. We want to give God thanks for Ina Claire Miller, who read the scripture. Uh, we also want to express gratitude to the Lord for the special music by Sister Hazel Claire Colby. The presenter was introduced by Sybil Claire McGillian. And once again, we give God thanks for Brother Willard Clare, who did an awesome job by summarizing his message on righteousness by faith, which we all appreciate. I know that I was blessed by it. And last but not least, we want to give God thanks to Ernold Clare for that prayer of thanks. From the Long Island District prayer team, we want to once again let Sister Carla know that we appreciate her standing in the gap and praying for us. Now, um, just as we come to a close, we're going to quickly go through these announcements and then play our song, have the benediction, and then the microphones will be open. Uh, we just want to encourage everyone when we open up the microphones, um, many persons might want to share. So we just want to encourage everyone to be as brief as possible, but you will still have the opportunity to share. But just be mindful of others who might desire to do the same. So uh, we just want to remind everyone that at the Johnson Park Church, Pastor Jamal, in conjunction with the South Bahamas Conference Youth Ministries, is having the Born Again Summer Revival that will run until the 30th. It is available on Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook. And uh, you want to remember that. Please support it, and let's pray for him and the team as they seek to blow the gospel trumpet. In August, on the 14th through to the 27th, Pastor Manasseh Sims from the Ephesus and Peardale District of Seventh-day Adventist Churches will begin another evangelistic effort entitled The Final Hope. Please let us not wait until it begins to start to support or pray for it, but let us do so even now. And especially if you have family members who are in that area, which is around the Camp Road area, Southern Camp Road, um, and also the Wolf Road area. If you have family living in that area, please begin to invite them out. Let them know that something wonderful is happening at the Ephesus Church that is right there off of Camp Road, that road connecting Camp Road and Village Road. Let them know that something wonderful is happening there and that they can go by and receive a blessing. And happening right here in Long Island, beginning on the 28th of August, we will launch our evangelistic effort following Jesus through the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. Please also add us to your prayer list and begin praying for the Lord to lead, guide, and bless this effort. Today at noontime on the Bree and Breath of Life Hour of Power, you are invited for one hour of spiritual upliftment. It happens every Monday to Friday at noon and Sabbaths at 8 a.m. on the Breath of Life Zoom link, 2915032855. If you don't catch um, any of these details as you would like, you can always reach out to myself, Sister Marie, or any one of us from the Long Island District Prayer Team, Sister Carla, 
and we'll do our best to get these flyers to you. Happening on the 1st of August through to the 8th, the Paradise Lifestyle Institute will host its seven-day Live and Healthy Lifestyle session. It's going to be a wonderful week of healthy living. And uh, you can see the features there on the flyer. Dr. Marvin Randall, Dr. Vanessa Miller, and Brother Lucanda Gardiner will be facilitating it. And all sorts of wonderful things are included in this package. Hydrotherapy, um, vegetarian food demonstrations, walking, morning devotionals, and much, much more. If you have not yet already registered, please go ahead and do so. And you can contact 8105622 for further information, or you can email P as in Paradise, L as in Lifestyle Institute, the number seven at gmail.com. Also happening today at noon will be the prayer service coming out of Andres from the Holy Land Replica Ministry. It will be at 12 p.m. And they host it from Sunday to Friday at 12 p.m. and on Sabbaths at 3 p.m. They have special days for fasting on Wednesdays and Sabbaths, and that will be available on Zoom. 829-454-4853 is the ID, and the passcode is prayer in small letters. The Breath of Life Church will host its whole night prayer vigil on July the 30th from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. All are invited as there will be representatives from Trinidad and Tobago, Turks and Caicos, and right here in the Bahamas, leading out in those sessions. So uh, please remember that you are invited for an entire night of spiritual upliftment. It's going to be on the Breath of Life Zoom ID, 3555999296. And then this Thursday, the 28th of July, all are invited to this book reading club as we go through the great controversy. It's been a wonderful time and all ages are welcome to participate. So please remember that that is this Thursday at 7 p.m. by God's grace. And it will be on this same Zoom ID, the Long Island Zoom ID. Please let's pray for and support Sister Delrose and the prison ministry as they go behind those prison bars and minister to the inmates. We can reach out to her for further information at 1242-454-6296. And last but not least, a big thank you. I can see that we have had some more persons subscribing to the Long Island District channel in the, in the last few days. If you have not yet done so, uh, please take some time today to go on YouTube, search for Long Island District, look for the subscribe button, click it and turn on your notifications so that you will never miss when we put up new videos or when we go live. And when you've gotten through with that, you can skip over on YouTube to the new Englishton Seventh-day Adventist YouTube channel and do the same. That is where you can connect with the South Bahamas Conference Bible class every Sunday at 6.30 on YouTube or you can also access it on Zoom. Thank you, everyone, for paying attention to these announcements. Uh, again, we're going to go into our song, Have a Benediction, and then we will open up the microphone. Again, we want to encourage everyone to please be mindful, and uh, you can share your remarks as briefly as possible so that others can also um, open up their microphones and share their greetings as well. God be with you until we meet again. God be with you till we meet again By his counsels guide uphold you With his sheep securely fold you God be with you till we meet again Till we meet Till we meet, till we meet God be with you till we meet again 
God be with you till we meet again. Neath his wings protecting hide you. Daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet again, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet, till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again, till we meet. Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. At this time, the microphones will now be open. Once again, uh, please be brief so that all, as many as possible can share. God bless you, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for all the prayers. I am open and it again. How does it be? I am still on the that is on change that. Thanks for Pastor Dasset and his crew. Thanks for each and every one who pray in the morning. I want to pray, but sometimes I don't have any service. But I'm giving God thanks for his grace and his mercy to all generations. Have a blessed day, everyone. Just suppose. God's sight through heaven and couldn't find one willing to be the supreme sacrifice that was needed just to buy eternal life for you and me. Oh, had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary. Had it not been for the old rugged cross. Had it not been for a man called Jesus. Then forever my soul would be lost. I'm so glad he was willing to drink the bitter cup. Although he prayed, Father, let it pass from me. And I'm so glad he didn't call heaven's angels. From these hands pulled the nails that torment me. Oh, 
had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary. Had it not been for the old rugged cross. Had it not been for a man called Jesus. Then forever my soul would be lost. Had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary. Had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then forever my soul would be lost. Good morning, everyone. I'm having difficulty with my throat this morning, as a matter of fact, for the last couple of days. And I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Son coming King. I'm grateful to be alive in the land of the living and can hear and can think and can feel and can speak. God has been good and he's good all the time. Pastor and Sister Dorset. Good morning, and the entire Long Island District team. All of you are pleasant. Good morning. Those on YouTube and Zoom platforms, good morning to everyone. Uncle Pat and Aunt Leone over in Canada, good morning. Auntie Leone, it's time to come home now. So we're looking for you soon. I would like to encourage those who are mourning the loss of their loved ones to trust God. I always tell you, tears are a language God understands. So if you want to cry, cry. But we cry not like those who have no hope. We have a hope that we'll meet our loved ones again. So let us be faithful. And those who are sick and recovering, God continue to bless you, stretch out his hand of mercy, of healing, and touch your bodies and restore you to health. My God. May we all have a wonderful day today. Sister Florel, good morning. I love you, girl. You I May we all be faithful oh, until you. Jesus comes. I love you all. Have a good morning, everybody. Okay, thank you, Sister Naomi. I think I heard um, Sister Cheryl Smith um, saying something. Didn't make it out clearly. Sister Cheryl, did you want to say something? Okay, must have been a mistake. Um, Sister Genovia, I heard you saying good morning. I'm not sure if you want to share anything else, but you can definitely do so at this time as well. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I would just like to say thank you on behalf of Gambia and Bethany. Thank you for your prayers. The outing went very, very well. And um, we have names and numbers of persons that we will be following up with based on the health measurements that we got from some persons. And uh, Sister Linden was awesome in her health counseling, it went very, very well. To God be the glory. Have a wonderful day, everyone.
Amen. All right, thank you, everyone. Um, we have heard from Sister Zemreen Brown, Sister Naomi Monker, Sister Genovia Florville, and Sister Justina Knowles. Uh, we want to give God thanks for what they would have shared. Thank you, Sister Naomi, for that beautiful song. Thank you, Sister Justina, for updating us as to how the outreach went. Once again, we want to give God thanks for the Clare family. And once again, we thank God for the message by Brother Willard Clare. So happy to hear that scripture that he shared with us from 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, Jesus Christ is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that is, in a nutshell, what righteousness by faith is. But faith in Christ and him alone that he is able to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. All right. Is there anyone else? Briefly, I see a microphone open. If you want to share, you can do so. We're just going to go to our last song, and then we're going to close off our meeting. Yes, Pastor. Good morning. I wanted to say good morning to everybody. And you guys have a wonderful day today. Amen. Uh -huh. Thank, thank you, Sister Sharon. Love you so much, Sharon. Oh, I have another Sharon. <laughs> All right. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. We're going to come. Hello. Yes, go ahead, Elder. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, trust everybody as well. Uh, we want to thank uh, Pastor Jan and Sister Jessica and the entire team for their dedication, commitment uh, to opening uh, this prayer channel for everyone to present their, their, their prayer request and even their concerns. Uh, we want you to uh, pray that God will grant us traveling mercy as we begin our trip back home uh, this evening around uh, 5.36 o'clock. Uh, thank you, everybody. Let us continue to pray for each other as we pray for you. God bless. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen, Brother Patrick. Amen. Thank you, Brother Patrick Wilson, uh, Sister Sharon Brown. Good to hear from you. Well, all right, friends, let us continue to trust in the Lord. God bless you, each and every one. And we look forward to the grandchildren from the Clare family who will lead out tomorrow by God's grace. Take care, everyone, and God richly bless you. Have I many days and sorrows? Have I questions for tomorrow? There are times I didn't know right from wrong but in every situation my God gave me blessed consolation Amen. that my trials come yes. and only make me strong yes. I've been in a lot of places I've seen many faces there's been times Let me know yeah. that I was alone. Amen. That's the reason I say.
God bless everyone. Thank you again, Claire family. By God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow as he spares our lives.